Welcome to the long take. I don't know exactly what episode we're on, but we'll say it's like 20. 70. Well, if I was the long say like take, it's like 20 something. Yeah, maybe 25. Yeah, low 20, something like that. Uh, we got Rudy joining us today. We are doing yeah. a couple of little news items. We're going to go through the entire Netflix slate and we're going to do something that uh, a guy at Geigman, he recommended to us, which I think was awesome. He said, you guys should go and pre-rate all of the things on the Netflix slate and see how far off you are when the movies actually come out. So we're going to do that, which will be fun. And then we're going to do a video game adaptation, sort of like Builder, if that makes sense. We're going to build our own video game adaptation in honor of The Last of Us, which is crushing it. Good ass show. Rudy, have you always been a gamer? Yeah, always. Always. Ever. Uh, the only time I ever got grounded was because I uh, was in um, maybe first or second grade and one of my first video game was an NHL, like, I don't even remember what year, but it was like an early NHL game. And I loved playing it so much that I pretended to be sick so I could stay <laughs> home and play it. Classic. And I felt I was so riddled with guilt that I confessed at 3 p.m. to my mom. But I, was, I literally, like the night before, I was like, I can't go to school. I have to play this video game. So I've, I've been addicted to gaming my you're entire life. Like 60 games into a season. <laughs> yeah. I got to finish this out. And you're playing every single one, like I full length quarters oh yeah periods. i do that with fifa i have a i have a be a pro in fifa where i basically just cosplay as like a real life pro football player it's yeah. impressive how sports games just maybe it's the nostalgia but they really just have not gotten better no yeah. i'm doing most of the mental lifting on on my end like i'm yeah. i'm writing my own fan fiction in my own head because they just don't <laughs> want to add a fucking cutscene to a billion dollar game they love writing on that they don't want to have to do anything other than like except for 2k and they're they my have, player. They put too much. Did you see the, yeah, the 2K cutscene where they like, or it's not even a cutscene. It's like you literally have to do it. You have to do like a TikTok dance. Dude, like, <laughs> that's what I'm talking about, man. They're it's, like, it builds up like your fan interaction. It's like, hey, you, you here, you got to spend like 20 minutes. You can't skip it. You got to talk to Haley Joel Osment for the next 20 minutes. <laughs> yeah. Like, what the fuck are we doing here? Just let me play basketball. It's literally all I want to do. <laughs> Like it should be an option. Like you could turn off cinematic bring, mode or bring whatever. Bring back Dion yeah. Waiters. <laughs> yeah, dude, the Dion, you ever see that? Uh, that rings a bell, but I can't remember it. Oh, I just, I oh, just... it's so funny. Him after they like had him do a cutscene for after a game. Um, was it when he was on the Heat? Uh, he was on the Cavs. I think Cavs. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. So <laughs> here it is. Maybe we can insert it after. <laughs> it's like someone just brought a like an iPhone mic up to him and just was like, "Okay, just say this real quick." Don't make me go look at everyone else. I just want to see Dion Waiters. <laughs> dude that sounds like, like a meme <laughs> it's so bad and like uh what that's do you call hilarious. it like, i get why they do that like have little players do their own voice acting but how if you're the like the head of that studio voice studio are you not like do that one again like give us one more shot at that you sound like he was like high off his ass yeah. trying that i will say this though to be fair to fifa 23 they did add a little bit to the career mode made okay. it a little bit better i was never a fifa guy just didn't understand soccer was the mm. big was the big roadblock there. That yeah, that was the thing is I got into soccer because of FIFA and now I love watching it. So mm. the two of them kind of go hand in hand. Like I got into it just because of FIFA. I didn't gotcha. get it at all. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, but yeah, so we could start out with some of these trailers and stuff. We forgot first they had a new Scream trailer for what was it Scream Six now at this Scream point? Six baby with Jenny Ortega because it's Netflix and I guess she's their girl now. Is that this the uh, chick from Netflix. like it's when? It's not Netflix. No, this movie's like hidden theaters. Oh, well, maybe it's just the Jenny Ortega is the world's thing right now. Yeah. She's the girl from that new show, Wednesday. Wednesday, right? yeah. yeah. I watched two minutes of that, turned it off. I'm not, I keep getting recommended it. I'm sure it's a fine show. I just like, I'm not into Adam's Family or I, Monsters. Me neither, but I shit. wanted it to be, maybe I didn't give it a long, it's not for me. It's meant yeah. for high school yeah. girls. I did yeah. the first three episodes with my mom because it came out during Thanksgiving break. Mm -hmm. And I was like, all right, this feels like something that could be big. So I'll check it out. Um, ended up being massive. It mm. looks great. Like, it looks fantastic. It's got the, like, the Tim Burton, like, shine to it. Like, has that really cool macabre, like, awesome throw a shit. macabre on us, damn. There we go. Um, but, like, it's just so YA. So generic yeah. YA. Like, every storyline is just like, oh, my God. Could have pulled this from, like, that Divergent series. Like, Literally just, anything on Netflix, too. Yes. Like, I mean, it has, like, the very clear, like, Netflix writers. The me. sheen. Yes. You know what I mean? To it. Um but yeah, I heard nothing but great things. So that sounded a strike on Wednesday, just more of our taste. Jenna Ortega is a good us. actress. Yes, I agree with that. Uh, but Scream, I wasn't like a massive fan of the last one. I think it was probably the best one since the original. But like that's really the, you think that was the best one since the original? But the, but the bar of that is so low. <laughs> I don't think it's that low. 
The other Scream movies were like I'm a big real Scream bad. guy. I like I like I like two and I like four. Three Hollywood didn't I didn't love Hollywood, mm. but I like two and four. Just not a Scream guy. I don't think I've seen any of them other than the first one. Mm. See, I, the first one might be my favorite horror movie. Which one all, has really uh, is it? Carmen Electra or Pam Anderson or both? She's thinking a scary movie. I think I'm thinking a scary movie. You think <laughs> this is a big issue with people born in like I think the 90s because we the our first a lot of our first introductions to the Scream franchise wasn't actually Scream. Like we can very clearly scary remember movies. like 2001 scary movie. Yeah, I, in my brain they're the same cinematic universe, which yeah. I guess they sort of. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I I, th- I, d- I can't differentiate the two, which is funny because Scream is like it's a parody too. Like yeah. it's just a parody of horrors. Like. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, we're in like incep- parody inception now. Yeah, it's double parody. <laughs> but like I do know agent. the first scream. I love the. F- I like the first scream yeah. a lot. Yeah. But I don't know the rest of them. I didn't see them. Yeah, good ass cast too. Then most of them held up like throughout the rest of the two thousands as well, which is kind of rare for horror. I mm-hmm. think like you maybe every any given horror movie you'll get like potentially one person that's good that comes out of it. Mm-hmm. If that makes sense. Um, it looked solid, but like it's just yeah, I'm not into scream anymore. I'm kind of feel like I'm past it. Dude, I can't okay. wait for Ghostface to be in NYC. <laughs> Uh, yeah. Hey, I'm stabbing here. Complaining about the rent or complain- wait, Ghostface Kill isn't it? <laughs> no, that's the name of the villain. Yeah, brother. the villain oh. is Ghostface. You know, just, the, the most classic horror face. Other I didn't than know he was Myers. called Ghostface. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I, I hadn't seen Scream. I'm Ghost- the wrong guy to talk. About. <laughs> what, what the twist at the end of this movie is that it's, it's, Ghostface, Ghostface takes off the mask and, and it's, it's just Ghost, Ghostface, Ghostface Killer. Killer. <laughs> that's definitely been done in like I don't know. It would fit with NYC. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it would actually. Uh, after that, we had the shrinking trailer. Uh, Jason Segel, uh, Harrison Ford, a couple other people as well. Look, looked like the Apple TV has been weird. Like their start was very rocky. But now I think they found their footing and the consistency. And like this looks like a good show, like a solid watch. It's insane how bad they were at first. That first year, the amount of money they were. I mean, and they were turning money in on those shows. Like C. C is like the second most expensive show ever made. Have you ever seen C? Mm -mm. No one has. Exactly. Human. And it made like three seasons of it. And from what I know, all of them were bad. Yeah. Um, But yeah, no, lately Apple TV like can't miss. Like everything Mm -hmm. they put out is. For the most Severance, part, quality. Ted Lasso still. Pachinko. Like Pachinko, yeah. Dickinson. Like, all these shows are good. The movies that they pick out and distribute. Like, Palmer, mm-hmm. good. Uh, like, we needed more Jason Siegel. The last thing we saw him in was that, uh, what was it, um, Windfall? When, uh, the movie Actually, on Netflix. Did, I never even watched that. It was solid. Too it, long, but solid, really solid. From Jason Siegel, too. Yeah, I, I, I thought it, the trailer was really good. Mm-hmm. I liked it a lot. I, I don't know. Like, if you swapped out. The actor with Jason Segel, I don't know, uh, or Jason Segel, I don't know if I would like it. Like, I think yeah. he's just like remarkably likable. Yes, dude, he plays like downtrodden, like yeah. a downtrodden, so, yeah. down dude, so well. Yeah, I like, mean, this is just you know, like f- sort of forgetting Sarah Marshall character just in a different timeline. Yeah, that's <laughs> true. Yeah. yeah, which I'm fine with. Like a lot of the times that annoys me, but that one I love, and I thought he was so so good in that. Yeah. So he's just so remarkably likable. And it's like a pretty basic story, obviously. He's fucking depressed. Mm -hmm. He doesn't know where to go. And then magically, he does like the opposite of what you're supposed to do. But then that's the way the world works. And then you take that into real life and realize that's like horrific fucking advice. Yes, exactly. But that's like the whimsy of movies. And then he's got the older guy that like is trying to help him out, which is Harrison Ford. This is just like, I mean, it seemed very basic to me, but Mm -hmm. I just really like Simplicity is good. I like. I, I just like him. I just. I find him to be a remarkably likable person. Someone said this is going to be like office space, but for a therapist. That's what it looks like. Yeah, like of. an existential crisis. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I dig that. But um, um th- that writers' room too. That's where most of my confidence comes from. It's Bill Lawrence. Okay. So Bill Lawrence did Spin City. Started out with Spin City, and then he did Scrubs, mm-hmm. and then he did Cougar Town. Which say what you want about Cougar Town. I actually think it's pretty solid for network TV. I've never mm-hmm. seen. Now he's done Ted Lasso. I mean, that is a great... I mean, the guy grouping. the guy can write. Roy Kent, who was also... Not Roy Kent. <laughs> Brett Goldstein, who played yes. Roy Kent, also a writer on Ted Lasso, and Jason Siegel's in there as a writer, too. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, that writer's room, strong comedic chops. I I think this should be good. Solid crew. And after that was the Wonderland trailer with Billy Crudup and um, Hank Azaria. Wonderland. Or what? It's called Hello Tomorrow. Oh, it's Wonderland. What a, oh his, the place was called Wonderland oh. in the trailer. That was why I fucked that up. Yeah. Hello Tomorrow. Um... It looked very interesting, like almost like Fallout ish, if that makes sense. Yeah. I never you, played Fallout. You played but Fallout? I, I played Fallout. Every comment immediately was like, this looks like the opening five minutes to Fallout. It 4. very much is. Like the 50s future. Type I thought, like, 
my mind act even though i'm a big fallout guy my mind first went to like the jetsons yeah um but uh i i don't know like i i didn't really care for it but i don't have a good like point to re like as to why mm. like i i don't know i just was like it's one of those another ones where it's like okay i know where this is going like if, if too it much felt, was revealed it felt think? like it felt like white version of sorry to bother you <laughs> I can see it does seem like that, like almost a uh, um, like he's running a scam or whatever. Yeah, like he's a salesman. A, he's a, and well, like, he doesn't really realize that he's running a scam. Yeah. yeah and yeah. then it's like there'll probably be some sort of like narrative about like capitalism versus like the greater good or yeah. like what. I don't know. But like it just felt like literally white. Sorry to bother you. Dude, nothing yeah. is hotter in the streets right now in the movie and TV biz than than capitalism. Dude, bad. that bubble is going to pop soon and it's going to be really <laughs> bad. To, the, like the menu was good and there's a lot of good stuff that has come yeah. out and like Parasite. Great. But like everybody's trying to try their hand at like class issues right now. Exactly. Like, and that, and then once that bubble pops, like it's like, going to be bad. Also, the issue is that like off rip, like parasite did it better than anybody. Yeah, probably he, anybody will. <laughs> yes. So like, how are you going to, yeah. it's tough for anybody. Like, sorry to bother you is a good flick. Mm -hmm. I don't think it like transcended my understanding of like the human experience. It very was just on a, the nose. It was yeah. just a very, yeah, it was like remarkably on the nose. It was just a fun watch, but like, Parasite was one of those movies where you're like, it like hits like levels of your yeah. like core, mm -hmm. like very subliminally. It like, it's just a, that's like a really high quality fucking movie. Yeah. And like legitimately, I would qualify that as a piece of art. Absolutely. Like it's yeah. a piece of art. Whereas like, sorry to bother you is a good flick. Yeah. Well, there's no shame in that. Making good flicks, man, is, is actually nowadays. I think that like you either make a piece of heaping dog shit that's just like mm. just a money grab or you make something like parasite that's like a piece of art making a good flick underrated skill mm -hmm. fucking hard these days bro mm. making just a solid flick nice guys flick certified flick yep dude i think that's a certified piece of art oh my it's, god it, it's it's high tier flick yes, yes. get out that. certified flick mm. mm -hmm. also probably up in the higher tier yeah. You know, it's a lot of stuff like that, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Like, it's hard to get the flick right. Yeah. There is nothing worse than just being like, like, we just reviewed A Man Called Otto. It's just a 60. Out. Like, it, there's nothing about it's it a, that's like, <laughs> you can't really take it down to like a bad movie, but it's just a 60 out of there, 100. Like, that's like, that's, I think, unfor like, the, oh, there's a lot movies of movies. Suck. Like, then it's like, I wasted two hours. Nothing about this was bad enough to be very funny. Like, yeah, there's oh. a lot of movies like that, that like, they barely exist. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. if you're a bad movie, you exist for sure because people remember you because they hate you. But there's some movies that are just they they're forgotten about forever because they weren't good at anything. They weren't awful at anything. They evoked zero emotion whatsoever. Mm -hmm. And like that's Man Called Auto. Did it culturally? It will never exist again outside of once the cycle of it being out ends, uh, which is just true. I, I hate to say it. It's just like it's in the void now. Um, but yeah, uh, the trailer was like interesting. I'm curious to see like a lot more about it only because I love Billy Crudup. Like, I mean, I love Billy. He dude, just doesn't do enough stuff. Yeah. Like, and I'm not going to watch the morning show. No, sorry. Not happening. <laughs> just not going to do it. Um, but yeah, no legendary voice actor too. That's Ashitaka, true. Baby. Hank Azaria, legendary voice actor for in his own right. Uh, obviously in yeah, Simpsons. Simpsons and all yeah. that other stuff. Um, okay. So now we're going to do <laughs> our Netflix this slate so walkthrough. <laughs> This is so dumb. This is so dumb, but, but I actually, it's so funny. I, but I actually love it. And people, I'm, also, when I put up that video yesterday and I was like, Netflix is a bad movie studio. Yeah. I had people coming in my mentions like, what are you talking about? Netflix is a really good movie studio. I'm like, like, what? where have you been? Netflix yeah. puts out just trash movie after. They hit sometimes, but like 90%. The hit rate is yeah. bad. It's terrible. Like, I think that's the thing that they don't realize because like, it, it's like something where like you have the people in our comments that are like, Oh, fucking like um, XYZ movie you like. Like, The Fableman's the worst movie of the year. It's like, you don't watch movies. You don't watch enough movies. Like, that's the thing. And like, Netflix, they put out 500 movies a year. We have to watch a lot of these dog shit ones. And like, that's why we know it's a bad movie studio. You just watch the ones that are like most popular on the list and everyone's telling you to watch. That's why I think they're a good movie studio. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah that's where that comes from. So now we're going to run through this slate. Again, suggested by Geigman. I think this is a good idea. We'll give it a little quick rating as to if we're going to think it's going to be good or bad. We can give it numbers too, I guess. Give, give us a uh, like, director like, oh we're giving you all the okay, shit okay. i'm giving you everything so the first one the trailers have been out for a while you've probably seen it uh you people a new couple and their families reckon with modern love amid culture clashes societal expectations and generational differences stars eddie murphy you know what uh, jonah hill and julia louise dreyfus directed by kenya barris who uh is the showrunner of black ish uh we've, i'm assuming you guys have seen the trailers for this it's like 
uh, Jonah Hill is dating a black girl and like his family is Eddie Murphy and like they don't like him. Really. Yeah, it's uh, an updated version of who's coming to dinner. Yes, who's coming yes, to it, dinner. Yeah. What the what was the Ashton Kutcher remake? Oh, uh, get it. It was with uh, what's his name? Bernie Mac. This yeah. Was, oh, it was bad. Yeah, that was not a that was not a great one. And that was Zoe Saldana was his actually in that or wife was it that? her Gabby Union? Oh, it might have been Gabby Union. I'm not sure. I only remember Ashton Kutcher. Keep going. The poster I'll, I'll look it up and because it was back. Ashton Kutcher on one side of the door and Bernie Mac mm-hmm. on the other. Um, but yeah, so the trailers for this that we have they've been up and around. It looks like this could either. Like you really need to play this close to the vest. If it's too obvious and like no no subtlety to anything, it's gonna be dog shit. If it's like they have a little bit to it, which hasn't really been seen in the trailers, could be solid. I'm guessing this is like a hard seventy. Yeah, I don't think this looks good at all. Yeah, yeah. I I I mean I like Jonah Hill, so that makes me want to watch it. But it feels like one of those movies where I'll watch the first twenty minutes and just be like, nah. Yeah, yeah, just not nah. nah. You know what I mean? Like, there's nothing about this that like jumps out to me as like, ooh, I'm curious. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm mean, like, it's another one of those movies. I mean, I, I'm sort of like a broken record, but it's like, okay, yeah, white guy dating a black girl. It's just the let's, jokes. Let's, let's, let's make. Let's yeah. <laughs> let's make. Let's 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 just run the jet sweep on on you know race <laughs> dynamics. And it's like, okay, I don't know. Maybe it'll <laughs> surprise me. I don't know, but like that. I, it's going to make me feel like I'm I'm the problem somehow. <laughs> yeah, I know. Like That's, it's going to make me feel like I feel like it's one of those movies where it's going to like convince me that I'm like I, I'm like I'm not going to walk away from it being like I'm going to somehow feel fucking guilty about a fake story. I want to oh I want to see just how they navigate the humor of it. That's my biggest big, biggest sort of There's going to be some stupid like they're going to make stupid jokes. Yeah. Like, well like on the trailer you be like, "Oh, I posted a black square on my Instagram. Don't you love me?" Like, yeah, it's, it's going to be, be shit, a lot like, of shit that. like that. Like yeah, 100 per thousand percent. Yeah, yeah. and just like, "Ah, Oh, yeah. Also, it was Zoe Saldana. It was Zoe Saldana. Guess right? who? Yeah. Guess who? Guess who? Yeah. yeah damn. Shorten the title down. The next one is your place or mine. Uh, a man looks after the son of his best friend while a woman pursues a lifelong dream as they swap houses for one life changing week. Reese Witherspoon, Ashton Kutcher, Jesse uh, Williams to rom com, directed by uh, Aline Brosh McKenna, who wrote Devil Wars Prada and Cruella. First okay. time directing a movie. Okay, that's strong. Strong background but i think when you look at the concept and you see ashton kutcher who's barely acted in the last like decade and reese witherspoon who's like she still got it he was like almost dead yeah that's true (laughs) so i'll I'll give him a pass for that i didn't that's still wild that he just didn't say anything to anybody that he was like almost dying yeah i forgot 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 that he almost died he was really sick did he have like a heart problem yeah because i think his brother had a really bad heart problem or some congenital let me look it up but uh we're yes. still stuck on Ashton Kutcher. This all comes back. This is the Kutcher part. <laughs> exactly. So I think if I'm look, just watching the little bit that they had in that video and seeing this this sort of dynamic, I'm not strong on this either. Rom coms usually pretty bad for the most part. Like the good the good ones are great. The everything else is kind of dog shit. Not really many good flicks in the rom com genre. I would say used to be used to be a lot. Used to be a lot, dude. The heydays pass us by. Yeah, like you know, it'd be a great sort of one for that like the bounty hunter okay this yes is, the bounty hunter good rom-com flick yeah his no uh he had, flick. He, he had yes. an autoimmune disorder that uh, okay affected his capillaries and he couldn't see hear, or walk for about a year jesus, jesus christ man. yeah like he was yeah <laughs> i like kutcher a lot but it's yeah no i mean my issue with a lot of these is that like with netflix is that it's so clearly that they're like check this demographic off, check this demographic off, check mm-hmm. this demographic off. Like just like going down, like they're so fan focused. Whereas like, if you look at like a 24, you don't know what the fuck's coming next. Mm-hmm. Like they're like, they're like, this is dope. And like, I am of the belief that the audience doesn't know what they want. Correct. Yeah. Like it's the Vince McMahon, the they don't know what, the fuck know what they, they want. want. They I'll don't, tell them what they want. Yeah. Like you make something fire that you're like, this is gas. Mm-hmm. They're going to be like, okay, yeah, this is gas mm-hmm. versus like, trying to focus on like making the fans happy like this to me is just like everyone yeah yeah they like opened the they're like looked at it like okay we're gonna make a rom-com let's get uh reese witherspoon people you know she's a this rom-com. is targeted this is targeted at mid-30 yeah white women yeah uh, ashton kutcher he's done rom-coms before he's he's like older but hot and then mm-hmm. you know we're gonna introduce some weird supernatural swap situation yeah it's just like it's, i will give ashton kutcher a five point bump i'm gonna land this at like a 60. Yeah, I'm going 60. I'll give it an extra five Bro, points. I'm putting this in the fucking Just 40s. based off the writer, I, I think Devil Wears Prada 
very i mean that's that's a classic right there yeah. and corella i thought was actually really, really solid really, movie. really solid movie. i think that was more what's his name though craig gillespie just like knowing music and how to add it and that's true doing good performances out of people so i'll go 65 maybe a ce- the ceiling on this is like always be my maybe yeah which always. was like <laughs> which is also like a netflix rom-com but that's like that's right in like below the flick category for yeah. me 40 <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, next was Luther, the fallen son, uh, Luther, which was awesome. Um, it's an epic continuation of the award-winning television saga reimagined for film, a gruesome serial killers terrorizing London while brilliant, but disgraced detective John Luther Idris Elba sits behind bars haunted by his failure to capture the cyber psycho psychopath who now taunts him. Luther decides to break out of prison to finish the job by any means necessary. Idris Elba, Cynthia Revo and Andy Serkis directed by Jamie Payne, who, uh, great name by the way. That's fucking awesome. Uh, who directed Luther, the, the television series. Great detective show, by the way, if you haven't watched it. I think it's all I, on Netflix. I have not watched that. It's on Me all on Netflix if you want to watch it. Wait, them, does, I think. does it just Elba star? Yeah. And mm-hmm. Luther? Yeah. Oh. Um, hmm. the tr- uh, this is something where it's, it's hard to pitch if you haven't seen the show or anything like that, I guess. But like detective story, very raw, gritty. And like I would say in more than anything else, like very interesting. And the fact that like they have Andy Serkis on board too is just really cool. I think that's – I'm in on this. I'd give this – preemptively speaking like i'm looking at an 80 right here an 80 Ooh. it's a great ass show man see i like i like this the stuff attached but like jamie Payne, like all he's done is this tv show yeah some other things here a lot of tv more than anything else a lot of tv uh, but like this is his sort of thing he did like i think four episodes is it your Alba a great actor or is he a great voice and like a great face more so the latter the, See, that's what I think. Things. I really like him. He's really good as Luther, though. Okay. Yeah, but it, yeah, that's a good. You're right. But like Luther, this is his his this is his thing, his role. Yeah, Have you is, watched it before? No, but I could just tell by the trailer. I was like, this is Idris. This is his lane. Mm-hmm. Like, okay. You know what I mean? Yeah. Hot, wearing a suit, kind of looking pissed. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Like kind of pissed, walking fast. A lot of areas to use his voice too. Where it's like, yeah. like he's like the private dick or whatever. Yeah. You know what I mean. <laughs> Yeah, he is. He's just he's just got it. Uh, next was Murder Mystery well, Two. Hold on. Oh, you want more on Luther? Well, I was going to say this is the. I'm only, going seventy. Yeah, mm, this yeah. is the only one that I looked at in the whole like slate of like the new Netflix. Where I was like, ooh, okay, mm-hmm. I, I like this. Really, this? Yeah, I was like, ooh, you like Because I, I mean, it, it's personal opinion. I, I love any kind of darker like detective mm-hmm. shit like that yeah. like i fuck with that a lot that that, that piques my interest because there's you, you, you they're, they're trying to solve something yeah there's a reason why mystery novels are the most popular that's true unanimously like book genre there's yeah. another title coming up that you're gonna love then yeah. what is it it's the fin- it's the fincher one but it's at the end of the year so we'll get oh, to fincher? it oh, i fincher? thought you were just gonna talk about murder mystery fincher which I, is literally next dude i oh, i i you don't even have to I, give me the description on murder i laid mystery. when a fincher comes comes down the 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 wire i open my legs and gape yeah. right? mm-hmm. i'm want it so this one though i mean like you said like you know all he done is this tv show whenever people are like this person did this thing or like even in the trailer if they're like from the creators of yeah. my immediate reaction just goes flop mm. because it's like dude like yeah okay they they like did that but like i don't know there's just something about that that's weird to me like unless you're like you've done like one or two things and they're like oh this guy did this so this is going to be good i don't see that as working unless you're at the level of like goat status where like mm-hmm. you've done like a fuck ton of things mm-hmm. and they don't even need to like say it anymore like yeah, if you, you just know you the name that, yeah. like fincher like if they're like oh directed by david fincher it's not like from the guy that brought you seven like they don't yeah. even need to fucking propagize that you know what the worst defender of that was uh did you see reminiscence no <laughs> but the, through the marketing yeah. they kept saying like from the creators of inception in westworld yeah and it's just lisa joy who's jonathan nolan's wife yeah who was like an associate producer on westworld and like an assist like she was like an assistant something on inception but they just gave her like creator <laughs> credit like you know what did just that like too. and then it like tried to basically rip off like the entire vibe of like nolan shit like mm. and it just did not do it <laughs> serenity did that too because they were like yeah made by stephen knight the mind that brought you peaky blinders and that movie one of the biggest flops yeah i have. just feel like you're just like sort of advertising that this isn't that I, I, I do like that i agree with that yeah but i think it works for most people when they see that like they just see like hey this guy made peaky blinders you should watch this i'd be like yeah 
like in my first reaction is usually just like, hey, this guy d- is now doing something else. I should in that thing I uh, first thing I liked, I should like this too. Yeah. You know, did you you remember the trailer for what's that HBO show coming up? The Idol. Uh, yes. It was like the first the like first title card. It was like from the dark twisted mind who brought you euphoria. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Yep. <laughs> Euphoria. <laughs> Euphoria, bro. I couldn't get through season two. Um, all right. Ne- next up, Murder Mystery 2. Now private 25. detectives <laughs> la- <laughs> launching their own agency. Nick and Audrey Spitz land at the center of an international investigation when their friend is abducted. Adam Sandler, Jennifer Aniston, Mark Strong. Um, directed by Jeremy Garlick, who didn't do the first one. Uh, he did direct his most recent direct- uh, uh, directing Garlick. job. Yeah, I want you Garrelik. Garrelik. Yeah, I want you Garrelik, Garrelik. my ball sack, dude. Garrelik. Uh, he, the last thing he directed was The Binge. I know, one of your favorites. Um, what was The Binge? It's really, it wasn't. Which one was The Binge? I'll show you. Please uh, tell me that's just an extremely fat-phobic movie. No. <laughs> <laughs> You'll know once you see it, because it has the jizz man. Is that the one where his dick got cut off? No, that's that's um, the, the cock or something like that. Fuck. Or, I don't know. The I box. think it was The cock. The it, box. No, it was like Dick. the cock because they did like the fucking thing blockers did with like the uh, the chicken or whatever, I think. I forget. Um, but anyway, that's the last movie he directed. Murder Mystery 1, I think it was kind of a pleasant surprise. Like, because yeah. you hear any of the Adam Sandler movies, it's like this, I don't know, especially at that point when like, one of the most previous ones he had done was, um, at least on Netflix, was like the- Sandy the, Wexler? No, fucking, that, what's it called? the NBA one? It was the, it was the, ma- no. the Magnificent, whatever. Like Magni- the- uh, Ridiculous Six. The Ridiculous Six, oh. which has like a, a fat zero. That's probably the worst one he's done. On Rotten. So I was a little like tentative in that, but like that movie was solid. Decently funny, um, interesting enough and short, which is always nice. So uh, I, I have very different feelings about Murder Mystery, <laughs> which I, I did solid. not think was funny. I think um, it was solid. I think it was solid, but yeah, uh, I don't really. This one is, you know, I mean, they're great. I like everyone in this a lot. Mm-hmm. I like all the actors. I like Adam Sandler. I mean, I haven't watched any of his movies in forever, but I'm uh, at a fifty for this. By the way, he's in his one for me, one for you era, yes. and the one for you is just his Netflix movies, and his one for me's are like the Safty shit he's doing. Like yeah. he's got another movie he's doing with the Safty Bros. And yeah, like, he's clearly like doing fun stuff on the side that he wants to do. Oh, he's on then, vacation. And then just cashing, yeah, just cashing checks on vacation. Yeah, no, he's, he, it's a fucking, he's a genius. Mm-hmm. It really is. Literally, literally getting paid on vacation mm-hmm. with Jennifer Aniston. Like, that's fucking brilliant. Like, I like I like just sort of him in general, but I'm not clamoring to, to catch this. Yeah, um, I'm low as well. Um, next up, the mother, while fleeing from dangerous assailants, an ex-assassin comes out of hiding to protect the estranged daughter she left earlier in her life. JLO. That's a bad start, I think, for this type of movie. Is this the one she directed? Uh, no. Uh, Nikki Caro directed this, who directed the live action Mulan most recently. Um, Joseph Fiennes, which is um, Ray Fiennes brother, uh, and Gail Gar- Gar- Garcia Bernal, who is a great actor. Um, JLO also is a good actor in other stuff. I don't think this particularly fits her. Uh, this is like the most hard 40 i think i can i've possibly seen ever like i just don't see how this works this out. sounds like the plot to what was the peppermint it's it is peppermint except with jlo basically yeah what that's the exact same plot except i think her daughter died her daughter and husband died and then she went after everybody in peppermint i think God. but yeah um the mother I'm, I'm looking at a 40 uh 40 30 somewhere in that range i think that this could be like I could see this actually being fucking awesome because it's just so mediocre. <laughs> like I, I, it's, I, there's certain movies I like that are just, that are just so, so, so basic mm. and JLo, like she's not like, I mean, she's not winning an Oscar, but there's just something, she there's almost, a certain je ne sais quoi, you know, she came like close. Do you ever watch Hustler? She was really good in Hustler. No, I actually never caught that, but I know she, I heard she was great. She was that. fantastic. I think she's that. great. And like, this is just sort of one of those ones where it's like, I'm like, I almost would rather see this in a theater because you just go to the theater just for the sake of the tradition of sitting down and like watching a movie that is not going to challenge you in any yeah. meaningful capacity. I don't know why. There's just something about JLo. Maybe it's nostalgia where it's just like, I, I feel like this one will be bad. Good. Yeah, I can see that. Yeah. Um, so next up, we have one. I think this is the one I'm most excited for on the entire list. Really? Extraction 2. Oh, yeah. After uh, being yeah, presumed oh, dead baby. in the first film, Black yeah. Ops Mercenary. 100 out of 100. Let's go. <laughs> Tyler Rake returns for another Tyler high Rake. stakes mission. Tyler Rake will return. He, that was great, by the way. It was so fucking <laughs> oh, funny. Oh, my God. So awesome. Uh, Chris Hemsworth, uh, 
Go, uh, I'm not. I'm not. Gonna, I'm going to try to pronounce it. Golshifta Farahani, who was um, his handler in the first movie, and Daniel Bernhardt, who isn't a name like that stands out, but like he was in John Wick. He's like in. He's in every action movie you've ever seen. You just don't recognize him like the name. I would say he's a great, great stunt guy. Um, and Sam Hargrave, who directed the first one, is coming back for this one. Uh, trailer part, or at least what we saw so far, looks awesome. All in cold weather after being in, uh, I believe, Bangladesh in the last one. Uh, looks fucking cool. I'm all about it. I think that Extraction was a severely underappreciated movie. And like, you might look at it and be like, hey, it was just so, it was just basic guy fighting. The action was so fucking cool that I, I just, I'm so into good. it. I'm yeah. just fucking into it. I'm looking at, I think this is, I think I have the first one at like uh, 80. Um, I think lessons are learned i think we move forward i think we're in 85 dude i think yeah in the 80s it's yeah. in the 80s i'll go 85 too i remember watching with my dad he was like tyler rake would absolutely fuck up jason Bourne. like he <laughs> oh, was yeah. like he was so into it god he, yeah like it i think it's the gold it is what netflix when they're doing these they've done a million of these like type like triple frontier red notice all these action gray man mm -hmm. But extraction is the one that got it right because they nailed the action exactly. so well like that is what i'm looking for like that's their gold standard. I well think. shot, well choreographed fight scenes. It's really all you need. Dude, yeah, exactly. It's just, if you're going to make a dude's rock movie, rock out. Yeah. And, mm -hmm. and Extraction just is, it, it's not like, it's not anything you, you don't, it doesn't try to be anything it isn't. Exactly. It's Chris Hemsworth beating ass. <laughs> just, he's so big too. He's like. just beating fucking ass, dude. That's what I want to see. Yeah. You don't notice it as much in like the Marvel movies, how fucking enormous is, he is. Cause like all those actors are just roided out. Like mm -hmm. they're all big. But like when you put him in there, like he looks so big. Like when he's next to the kid, the whole yeah. movie, like he's so massive. He's so at six foot three, six yeah, foot four. And yeah. just like the broadest frame and just murdering guys hand to hand uh, combat like, constantly. And like they have like, oh, they had a really cool long take in there. Do you remember that? Yeah. They're, ironically enough, like they're really cool long take where like they follow him in the car, gets out of the car, goes up and fights in like the stairway. Oh, yes. And shit. Yes. And he goes into the like broken down like apartment building. Yeah. 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 Dude, that was awesome. Yeah. Oh. This looks like it fucking rules. Dude. And he like hits the fuck out of those kids remember yeah. <laughs> those kids that try to jump he beats the shit out of them. <laughs> he beats the shit out of those like 10 year olds <laughs> uh next up was they cloned tyrone um this looks really interesting uh, a series of eerie events thrust an unlikely trio on a trail of a nefarious government conspiracy in this pulpy mystery caper john boyega tiona paris and jamie fox their character names are sick by the way it's fontaine yo-yo and slick charles Jamie Foxx playing Slick Charles. I was about to say, Jamie, awesome. Jamie Foxx has to be Slick yeah. Charles. Uh, it's directed by Jewel Taylor, who wrote Creed 2, and also Space Jam 2, but Space Jam 2 is a money movie. That's not, I don't count that against them. But Creed 2, I always thought was solid, especially from a writing standpoint, maybe more from the, the execution standpoint. Um, looks awesome. What we saw from it was cool. Uh, John Boyega getting to be in movies that aren't in franchises, I'll always tune in for. Um, and Jamie Foxx is just... And Tiona, Tiona Paris, like too. Like we, I feel like I haven't she seen was, enough. For she either. was really good in uh, what in, was it, Wandavision? Yeah, in Wandavision. Um, in Jamie Fox, like I'll tune into anything he does. I think he's the most talented people alive. The I'm excited for this, but the only thing that worries me is this has been delayed like four times now, three mm -hmm. times. Like which, because we got our first trailer back in like yeah October, September, and it it just keeps getting moved back, which always worries me with these movies because it's like it feels like they're just trying to find a spot to dump it <laughs> um but I'll outside of that i think yeah interesting concept i like all these actors i don't know how to feel about that director uh knowing that he did space jam 2 which, just wrote it wrote it didn't direct it that's that's offensive too <laughs> um I'll go. I'll go seventy-five, ten, tentatively seventy-five. As I'm putting seventy-eight, but I feel like there's a potential here to go up to ninety-five. You know what I mean? Like My, it could be incredible. The, could it's be all okay. I think this will be completely. This will. The score will hinge entirely on the twist. Yeah. What is the twist here? Yeah, the twist. Exactly. The twist is what I was like. Okay. You've got my, you've got it's high risk, high reward when you, when you're in the twist game. Yes, exactly. High risk, high reward. I, this one looked really cool. I, I, I was really into it. I was like, this is fucking tight. Like, what was the song they used for that trailer too? It was like, uh, you dropped a bomb on me you or something. dropped a bomb on me. Yeah. Baby. Yeah. It's cool. Pulpy is the great way to describe it. I mean, it looks awesome. Yeah. And like the whole aesthetic look cool. You don't really know what the fuck is going on in the trailer. Like mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I thought it was, I, th I found that to be like a definite, like one of the be better ones. Now we have one that I think is the opposite end of the spectrum from Extraction for me. Heart of Stone. <laughs> Fuck, I only just read this. Is the Millie Bobby Brown one? No, Heart of Stone. Rachel Stone is a CIA agent. Wait, 
Oh, so okay, Heart of okay. Stone and the names the CIA agent is Rachel Stone. The only woman who stands between the, her powerful global peacekeeping organization and the loss of its most valuable and dangerous asset, starring Gal Gadot and Jamie <laughs> uh, Jordan. 15. And directed by Tom Harper, who directed a lot of uh, Peaky yeah, Blinders yeah. episodes. Actually, yeah, I do like him as a director. <sighs> but I mean, I'm at like, a hot, hot 20 for this. Yeah, I mean, listen, Gal, I'm sure you're a good person. I don't know. She just is not a good actress. Bad She's actress. A bad actress. Like, like act- actively bad. Yeah. Ugh. Yeah, no, this is... And Jamie Dornan, like, we've learned that he's better at comedy than he is at this Why won't he do more comedy? He's really funny. <laughs> he's bad at stuff that's serious. What uh, has he done in comedy? Did a uh, Barb and Star. Barb and Star, he, and was, he was hysterical. He was so funny. <laughs> like, so funny. He was I've really, really that. funny. Um, and then he does, like, he, before that, does, like, the, um, what do you call it, um... Gray's or no, what the fuck? Belfast. No, Fifty Shades of Grey. Like he does yeah. that shit, and it's like awful. Uh, but yeah, actually, he was good in Belfast. To be fair, but that wasn't like a super challenging sort of thing. Uh, yeah, hard twenty for me. What do you think? Yeah, I'm, I mean twenty. Like Gal is just nobody's stock has fallen lower mm-hmm. over the course of five years. I mean, she was a a a list like could get any contract she wanted after mm-hmm. wonder woman and now it's like people are just like realizing she can't deliver lines like <laughs> yeah she just can't she can't do it she's the ultimate like you know when people say someone's a system quarterback she was a system quarterback yeah. in wonder woman she was just in a great scenario didn't really have to didn't challenge her to do anything really impressive and we we're all like yeah wow pretty good she and can then, smolder yeah she can smolder with the best of them and she's got charisma she's like for all we know, like a nice person all that shit but like can't just can't act very well she works well with the uh, Zack Snyder slow-mos yes like. exactly <laughs> Uh, place to her strengths next up is lift which is also kind of interesting um follows a female master thief and her ex-boyfriend who team up to steal 100 million dollars in gold bullion being transported on a 777 or 777 passenger flight starring kevin hart sam worthington and gugu matha Ra, who um is in much stuff now she's in, she's really good as well uh it's directed by f gary gray who did friday great great comedy and also the italian job did the most recent one which i also think is awesome um you see Kevin Hart in anything, and I think you immediately, like, you go downhill a little yeah, bit, right? Yeah, Like, the expectations get lowered in anything, especially because this is, like, a comedy action sort of thing. And, like, I my, I don't know. There's something about that just because of all the ones he's been in so far. It's just the standard gets lowered a little bit. F. Gary Gray, I think, Dude, is a really good director, though. I was going to say, F. Gary Gray. That's a, yeah. that's a really good director to have attached to something it's like good this. Director. The thing about Kevin Hart, and I like Kevin Hart, he's an entertainer. Mm-hmm. In any movie he's in, they shouldn't even give him a character name. He should just be Kevin Hart. Just be Kevin Hart, yeah. Yeah, like, that would actually be a funny run, run, running bit. But, like, yeah, I, I feel bad saying that, but it's true. Like, as soon as you see Kevin Hart, you're like, okay. That's Kevin Hart. Okay, well, you we're, doing, we're doing the Kevin Hart thing. Mm-hmm. Like, Kevin Hart, we're just doing this. Great entertainer, but, like, just something about his movies. Just, I don't know. I mean, he just, he had that run from like 2014 to 2017 where he was just in every fucking movie. Every movie that was made. Every comedy. Every comedy. He killed comedy movies. Yeah. I blame him. I'm at like a 65 for this, I think. Yeah, I'll go, I, I'll, I mean, is Sam, Sam Worthington a good actor? Like, not really. I think he's good in certain things, but it needs to play to his strengths. <laughs> like Avatar. The F. Gary Gray thing is, it's yes. doing doing a lot of the heavy lifting here. Yeah. And the the idea, I do like heist movies. Like, I'm a yeah. sucker for those. Yeah, the heist part makes it definitely much more interesting. Probably better than a good heist. Yeah. Uh, Except for Kaleidoscope, which I'm, I'm refusing to watch at this point. That's my, you know how Jeff refuses to watch The Boys? I'm refusing yeah. to watch that stupid ass. It's, the, the it's a... Kaleidoscope is like a very, it's not good at anything sort of show. Great background show. Did you really watch it, Rudy? Show. That, that, that show that you can like start at In any, any order. order. Like start any episode. No. Imagine. Bro, I was actually going to ask you guys this. Like, I'm perplexed at how they are affording and like continuously just making this many shows. They they by can't. They now they're bumping they up our subscriber it. prices, they, cutting down password sharing. They've never turned profit, dude. Yeah. When I when I go through Netflix, I'm like, what the fuck, dude? Like, uh, it's a there could not be a better time to be an actor. Yeah, there's like two billion shows. I don't have enough fucking bandwidth to like even come close to consuming this amount of content. Yeah, and like Netflix especially is just like 
I can't, I'm just stunned by the amount of shows, just utterly stunned by the amount of shows and IPs that are out there. It just blows my mind. And then you go look at HBO and like, they release like one tenth of what Netflix releases every year, but every single one of them bangs. Yeah. And like, HBO, yeah. not HBO Max. Yeah. Yeah. HBO, like original stuff. Even most HBO Max original stuff is better than anything Netflix. Yeah. You know what I mean, I mean, the Netflix model, like that's going to pop. Like they can't, there's no way they can continue doing it. Like it's there's a new, sustainable. there's a new series every week. Mm -hmm. There's just so much. Also, I'm curious if you guys have heard anything about this. I've always had this theory that I can't really put like my finger on it, but there's something about everything that is a Netflix original. The like way that they shoot it bothers yeah. me. Yeah. It's all is the that same. a thing? It, it feels very, like they have the di- same person doing it all. I think they shoot everything on digital, which mm. is pretty noticeable. It has like this like veil or like it's like a sheen to it. Yeah. Is that a thing? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So Absolutely. I'm not the only one. I've been telling that to people. I'm like, there's just something about like Netflix where like even if they didn't have the watermark, I'd be like, oh, that's a Netflix exactly. original. Yeah. You like, can tell. Everything about it is like has like a it's like they have like a Netflix stock filter. Exactly. Yeah. It's like this uniform it's feel a, to them. It's all. a sheen that like. Everyone notices it I, again, and not just you. That is a very common thing. Okay, for there you, that okay. That's why when I like went through these series uh, and put up a video on like TikTok and was like running through them. We'll get to it in a second. Like Zack Snyder, I said like I don't think Zack Snyder is a great director, but I think like if you are a director with a very strong sense of style, I think that's important for Netflix because you got to be able to break out of their mold, or else yeah. like it just all blends into the same shit. Like exactly, <laughs> have your own style and make sure you enforce it. Uh, next up, we have Damsel. Um, after being locked in a tower and then hidden deep in a forest to prevent a prince from rescuing her, long-haired Rapunzel vows to get revenge. Stars Millie Bobby Brown, Angela Bassett, and Robin Wright. Directed by uh, Juan Carlos Fre- uh, Fre- Fresnadillo. Fresnadillo, who directed 28 Weeks Later, um, which was a, the worst sequel of 28 Days Later. Um, so this movie... This is like the ultimate Netflix movie. Yeah, you know this is mean? just a no. You just oh, look at it. And it's God. like it looks like it's like a money laundering scheme, basically. And like Millie Bobby Brown, awesome actress. She's been in other good Netflix movies, like the uh, um, uh, Sherlock or Noel Holmes. Like she's really good at that. This is the type of thing where it's like this is like a fake movie. This isn't real to me. How do they get her to do this? Money. Uh, maybe she has some sort of contract with Netflix, like a multi picture deal with Netflix, but it she just seems somewhat selective, though. Does she not? I mean, I guess, but it's just, I don't know, man. It's everything about this looks like it's going to be dog shit. I'm it, at like a fucking. It yeah. reminds me of that. Uh, I don't know, what did Joey King do last? The princess. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like it reminded me of that, which was also not good. Yes. So, yeah, I'm going 50, 40. I'm going 40. I'm going 40 I as like well. Millie and I like Angela Bass, but. Yeah, I fuck with Millie Heavy, but... Mm -hmm. Okay, Drake. That's just Drake, yeah. Listen, I'm not taxing her. (laughs) I'm just a fan. Dude, that shit was so creepy. Yeah, weird. Uh, (laughs) The next one looks more interesting. Pain Hustlers. Pain Hustlers. uh, Liza has a dream of a better life for her and her daughter, so she gets a job at a bankrupt pharmacy, and Liza's guts catapult the company into getting into the high life, not knowing that she will soon be in the middle of a criminal conspiracy starring Emily Blunt... Chris Evans okay. and uh, and Catherine O'Hara from obviously Home okay. Alone and solid cast. Uh, Andy Garcia and is in there too. Directed by David Yates, who did like basically every Harry Potter except for the first two. Or okay, first three. Um, very interesting back like back uh, back end with Yates. Really good cast. Interesting plot. This sounds I, like just Molly's game. It's yeah uh, yeah I can see like the comparisons there for sure. It's just like I'm curious what how they fix the or how they approach this genre wise because like pharmaceutical sales is like a devious devious injury like an industry. So I don't know if they're gonna take that angle or they're gonna take more like um, just like a regular standard criminal conspiracy sort of deal. Um, but I'm interested in. It. I'm gonna I'm throwing like in like a let's say a seventy eight at this. I say seventy eight for pain hustlers. This is. The writer's like first credit, <laughs> mm-hmm. which is I kind of actually like that. Yeah, it's uh, an adaptation of a book that that puts points up. Yeah, because um, presumably the book did well. Usually, this is one of those ones though you just have no way of predicting. Yeah, like zero ability to predict. It. But I will say this though: I think Chris Evans typically doesn't say yes to things unless it is of a certain quality. Am I tripping? Um, more re- like recently sort of yes but then he also does like like operation red sea or whatever the fuck that is what was red sea it is or the gray man no fuck what 
was it? No, no. But Gray Man, you can count her there too. But it was like a, it was like a movie where like he was like a fucking diver in Africa or something. It was really weird. It came out in the middle of the Captain America runs. Like he does random movies outside of the franchises, but then he does like Knives Out. So yeah, I I, I think that the cast the cast is Emily Blunt is very selective. Yes, with her that's stuff. true. She's like notably like oh. has been known as like a very selective person. That so. Jamie Dornan movie she did though was dog shit. What Jamie Dornan movie did she do? Yeah, like last year, not 2022, 2021, she did one with Jamie Dornan where they were like Irish people falling Wild in love Mountain. or something. Yeah, Time, some, something. Wild like, Mountain? No, something Mountain Time or no. some, or something, something Time. T-H-Y-M-E, I think. It's not showing up. Wild Mountain Time. Oh, that's right. That's yeah. what it's called. Yeah, that one. It was And it was it was bad. Um, yeah, I don't know. It looks... We'll see when we get there. And then this is the one I think we're probably all the most excited for outside of Extraction. The killer, uh, an assassin, begins to psychologically crack as he develops conscious, even uh, as his clients continue to demand his skills. Michael Fassbender, Tilda Swinton, directed by David Fincher. Uh, is, I think the first one of his multi-picture deal I think he did had with um, Netflix. Um, I love this. I love because we're, we're big Fassbender guys. And Fassbender has the worst agent of all time. Like just keep oh, putting in terrible movies. Dude. So many bad movies. So bad. Like fucking Assassin's Creed movie. Do you remember that? Oh uh, yeah. Barely anyone does. The Snowman. The Snowman, one of the worst movies of like whatever, twenty nineteen, whatever year that was. So many terrible movies and very few good ones. And then like now him and David Fincher, like that feels like a no fail scenario. I'm very high on this. It I'm does. It really my... just feels like there's no way this will be bad. I'm in a ninety on it. Yeah, Fincher, um, it's hard to envision a world where he just doesn't do the Fincher thing. Yeah. Like even his bad stuff, like not even bad stuff, like even something like Mank, which isn't like phenomenal. It's still a really good movie that's Oscar nominated. Yeah. <laughs> like, and like even the shit like he was doing on like the side almost like Mindhunter was like one of the best Netflix dude, that's shows. What I was about to bring this up. This better crazy. be fucking great because if it's not great. I'm going to be so mad that Netflix cut his deal on Mindhunter, Mindhunter to have him yeah. do this shit. I mean, the second season definitely wasn't as good as the first, but, but still Mindhunter better than, was brazy. In season two, even if it wasn't as good, it's still better than 90% of the stuff Netflix was making. Yes, exactly. Like 95%. Like, like, yeah. Oh, God. I still don't understand what happened there. He like said why? that like that it costs a lot to make and that not they a lot don't of people, give a fuck about that. <laughs> that's the exactly. weird thing. And then he said also not a lot of people were watching it, which also feels crazy because I feel like everyone I met ever has seen. I Mind will Hunter. say this, though. They I th they fucked up the like, who knows why? There's probably a billion reasons mm -hmm. and ones we don't know. But they took way too long for two to come out. Yeah. Like there like, were what, like the, the static, the static kind of wore off. I mean, Once, people are serial killer crazy right now. Like they're more, all, more yeah. than ever. Like you yeah. see, they grow ballistic over Ted Bundy and all that shit. Yeah. Instead of sexualizing Jeffrey Dahmer, how about we just like make a good, like good true psychoanalyze him? Yeah. 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 No, it's cool. Like, I mean, it was just really fucking cool. The style was cool. The music was cool. Like all, everything about it, the way it was shot was just so good. Mm -hmm. And like I said, the second season was sort of a drag compared to the first I felt, but yeah, no, that was disappointing. I was pretty fucking sad. What was about the that. Uh, the big guy's name? The big serial killer? Oh, dude, he was so good. Uh, That's Cameron Britton who plays him. He was really what is good. His at name it. Ed. He skull fucked. Yeah, Ed. He skull fucked his mom's. Uh, yeah. Uh, that skull. He was Helms. great in that series. <laughs> it's not, yeah. nah, not Helms from the Hangover. Uh, fuck. I forgot Ed. What? What is? Yeah. Kemper. Kemper. Ed, Ed Kemper. Kemper. Yeah. Um, that character was he. That that was awesome. Really, it was so good, dude. Um, the next is a family affair. Uh, an unexpected romance triggers cosmic or comic comic consequences for a young woman, her mother no. and her boss grappling no. with the complications of love, sex and identity. No. Joey King, Nicole Kidman, Zach Efron directed by Richard Lagravy niece. Yeah. Nah, dude. His most no. recent thing is freedom <laughs> writers that I recognized. Yeah. Nah. Yeah. This looks like dog shit, bro. Throwing a 20 at it, bro. Efron do the world a favor and just keep going around the world with your weird <laughs> yeah. life coach. That yep. was gas dude that was fucking fire that was awesome that was him ha go around the wor world and have the guy explain water yes. and then have your mind blown by water That's i like seeing zach efron just going around the globe and being mind blown by legitimately just naturally occurring things that's what chris Hemsworth is kind of doing now or like with that it was a disney show or whatever he's been doing oh yeah yeah dude it's the good. one where they went from england to france and they went through the, the they went through the channel <laughs> and his like life coach goes, I want you to take your shoes off right now. We just shifted. We just shifted, made a major movement. 
and we've traveled a lot. We need to get grounded with the earth and re and re like reorganize ourselves One of those. with the uh, earth's magnetic field, which I get that. Like, yeah. call me crazy. I fuck with that. They went from England to France. Yeah. They went in a fucking miles. tunnel. It's a hundred miles. Yeah. It wasn't like he went to the moon. I mean, it was amazing. Or even I like really cross continent. It was just kind of a long drive. Yeah, I know. This sounds like dog shit. Joey King, she's the, she is the, the quint like even more so than Millie Bobby Brown. They mm -hmm. need someone to throw out a movie. They're putting in Joey King. Yeah. I just, I feel bad for her, man. In a big, big time. Um, next was leave the world behind. Uh, this is interesting. A family drama based on the upcoming novel by Ruman Alam, I, which is like a weird synopsis to give. Uh, Ethan Hawke, Julie Roberts, Kevin Bacon, Mahershala Ali, a lot of heavy hitters. I don't know if that's just me, but I would think of Ethan Hawke and Kevin Bacon as being very similar. Like, I'm shocked I couldn't see them in a million similar movies. This is my number two on the year. They're, looks, they, yeah, they're the same type of white dude. Mm -hmm. It's directed by Sam Esmail, Esmail who directed Esmail. Uh, Mr. Mr. Robot. Mr. Robot Baby. Yeah, Mr. Robot Guy. Uh, very interesting. Just the cast list alone is like you're immediately in, especially Mahershala Ali, who I feel like so I haven't sick. seen a lot lately. I feel like. Yeah, no, I, f I love Mahershala Ali. I think he's, he's so, good. so good. I think he's so good. So I will see this one strictly based off Ali. Yeah, I'm 85. And Hawk, right dude. Now. I mean, Hawk goes crazy. Yeah, I'm, a, I'm up at an 85. Yeah. This would be number two on the year for me. This is like, get everyone in there. Yeah. What was the uh, dude? I think S Mal. Uh, you Robot haven't watched. You really haven't watched Mr. Mr. Robot, but fuck if that showed up. I've seen it. You have. I've watched Mr. Robot. I, yeah. seen oh, it, I didn't watch dude. the last season of it. Oh, but. Dude, the last season was so good. I didn't. I didn't watch. You know what? The, you know what? Was, I think the best <sighs> compliment I can give Mr. Robot is that it convinced me that Christian Slater wasn't a shitty actor. Cause I was like, this guy's terrible. He's he was, awful. He was good for that role. Yeah, I like good. his. I like his '90s stuff. His early '90s. Like stuff. Fucking Broken Arrow. Like, <laughs> it's like, oh, like Heather's and uh. Yeah, but even Pump then, up the volume. He's not asked to do a lot, and like, anytime he is, it's just this is bad. Dude, uh, you got to watch Pump Up the Volume. He's, he's great in that. I just not not a fan until Mr. Robot, and I was like, oh yeah, he's he's got it in the right spots. It's also like the perfect role for Rami Malek. <laughs> yes, that's like, also true. Well like, casted all around, I'd say. <laughs> um, and then the last one is Rebel Moon. Which has been talked about a lot. A young woman seeks out warriors from other planets to fight tyrannical armies terrorizing her peaceful colony. Uh, Charlie Hunnam, uh, Sophia Batella, Anthony Hopkins, Corey Stoll, Ed Screen, um, or Scrine, I don't know how you pronounce it. Uh, Jaiman Hansu, and it's directed by Zack Snyder. It's basically Zack Snyder's Star Wars, I guess, if you want to call it that. Um, <laughs> Zack Snyder is so hard to predict. This has got the biggest variance. This could be yes. This could be a 20. This could be an 85. There's really... yeah. I mean, he's so this is so impossible hard to, predict. to predict. This could be an absolute fucking disaster. The 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 few clips we got looked disasterish. The, the trailer say. did not look good. Yeah, the, I, I didn't even really look at the the clips. I was looking at the trailer or the screenshots because mm -hmm. it was like you only got like two seconds of clips. yeah. But like you see like explosions and stuff, and I'm like, eh, but and like the fact that Netflix is in charge of like a big scope sci fi CGI thing, I'm like. Eh, you know what's also worrisome? This is going to come out like two months after Dune Part 2. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> that Dune sucks. Part 2 is going to come out and then eat up all the sci-fi sci territory. Yeah, this sci Dude, opera. call me crazy, man, but I think Zack Snyder is unanimously overrated. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that's... Uh, I think there's only just a group of people that really... I, it's the Snyder fans. And the Snyder fans, they think he is the greatest director of all time. That's the thing. I don't think Zack Snyder's overrated. I think he is vastly overappreciated by his fans. Yes. Like, if that makes sense. Like, people... His fans think he's, like... Like, like his like fans a David can't Fincher just be like, oh, he, like, makes movies I really like. They have to be like, oh, like, he has changed modern Hollywood. Like, they yeah. legitimately think he changed modern Hollywood. No, yeah. no. He, he, when I think of Zack Snyder, I, I think of like, he makes iPhone case type movies. Mm. Like he makes <laughs> sharper image type movies where it's like, whoa, dude, there's shadows. Yeah. <laughs> and there's fucking slow-mo like he, 300 fire. Mm -hmm. Don't get me wrong. That is a fact fire. But that is like at that time, that style was like perfect for that movie. And it hadn't mm -hmm. really been seen. Yeah. If it came out today, we would think it's horrible. We'd be like, "This is the most over CGI, overwrought nah, garbage." Dude, I would, I would, I, would I don't think so. I don't think thing. so. I think that shit would go to like straight to TNT if like. No, it came I out think today. I think it would be. In, I think it would still be like a dude's rock. Like I think it would be like but, RRR, like where it's just like this is so ridiculous. That's the thing it. with Zack Snyder, which is why I still I feel like fuck with him to that degree. Where it's like he is the dude's rock director. He's that guy. You yeah, know what I mean, no, like, dude, he's he's the kind of dude's rock where he's like 
he his fans are like crypto dudes. Mm, that's true. That they are, is true. Yeah, yeah, he yeah, even yeah. gets them on like the little app, like Velo. Like yeah, he, he, they're Vero, crypto dudes. Velo. Yeah. Vero, yeah. Vero, I think. Right? Vero, yeah. He gets them on like their own app. He has like, his own Zack Snyder app, basically. That like every he, time he drops news, he drops it on there. He drops it on this like Vero app. That's kind of cool. Which is just like it's like Twitter, but I, it's just not Twitter. No, I respect Except, him for like how like interactive he actually is with the fans. Like he's yeah. like he loves his fans and they love him back for it. Um It was a great interview too. And I'm a man of Steel Defender, but I think that had a lot more to do with Christopher Nolan being involved yeah. than it did him, because once Nolan was gone. Fucking Having bat. said that, I'm going to see this because I am never, I'm never not looking for sci-fi. Mm-hmm. I love sci-fi. I'll watch bad sci-fi. I'll watch Me medium too. sci-fi. Like sci-fi is the one thing where I'm like, I'll just watch it because I love sci-fi. So I'm going to watch it. I got to say, the places outside of Hollywood have been making some really good sci-fi lately. Like Korea, Korea. and China. Korea has been nailing it. Really good at sci-fi recently. Um, all right. So that's the end of the Netflix haul. Now we get to make our own video game movies. We'll just do me, Gooch, then Rudy. Um, you want to just like go like I think we just do title, the whole thing. Yeah, what title you want to do? Your lead actor, second actor. Let's just do all. We'll director, do the whole thing at once. I think each, if that makes sense. Okay. So I will just throw right. mine in. Yeah, it'll be easier to com- compartmentalize yeah. for the film. Okay. Let yeah. me pull up. Let me pull up my uh, my so list. So for mine, I have. Uh, I want to make in my dream world a Halo movie. Uh, the Halo show was terrible. Yeah. Um, but I want to make a Halo movie that is specifically Halo ODST. Because okay. Halo ODST, I don't know. Okay. Do you ever yeah. see the trailer? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. The oh, trailer yeah. for ODST is the hardest video game trailer ever. Maybe just the hardest trailer ever made, period. Yeah. Um, I just went through and I grabbed the character list from the game. Like the game itself isn't remarkably memorable, but I think the idea of starting off a Halo universe with ODST is smart because basically when you have Master Chief and you have Spartans, if that's like a level of suspension of like disbelief to a degree. And also you can't. You, when you have Master Chief take his helmet off, people are going to get pissed. But you can't hire a big time actor to play Master Chief if like they're never you're never going to see their face. Tom Hardy. I don't know, dude. Tom, yeah, Tom Hardy. Pedro Pascal <laughs> did the Mandalorian in like. But yeah, but he took the bucket but off. That's also a series, and he did take it off, and and like his voice was a big part of it. And I'm thinking like if you if you have Master Chief, right, you need to have the guy voicing Master Chief that actually voiced him. I forget his name off the top of my head. Like that's just like there's iconic parts of that where it's very difficult to find a good enough name for that. I think with ODST, you don't have that helmet issue, really. So you're it's thinking of the James people. Earl Jones route. Like, just like, S- yeah. guy in a suit, but you got a voice over. Bro, my entire childhood, yes. I just, for with no evidence, just was like, oh, that's Kiefer Sutherland. <laughs> it was, then, it's not that dissimilar of a voice. And then, like, years and years and years later, they were like, yeah, it's not Kiefer Sutherland. Yeah. I was just like, you know what? I never actually did any Googling. I just was like, that's Kiefer Sutherland. <laughs> <laughs> so I think, um, but yeah, so I think that the hum- them ODST just being like regular people, but in yeah, like, like you can make a legitimately war. great war movie when the sci-fi setting. Um, so the characters, there's Dare, who is in like Office of Naval Intelligence Officer, like the CIA, a company agent, basically. Charlize Theron. It was a girl in the game girl here okay you think about her role in prometheus it'd be almost like that if that makes yeah. sense uh which by the way amazing sci-fi movie on its own dude right? yeah you're a prometheus defender i'm a too? big time prometheus big time. Defender. i like i like prometheus. the only thing that's undefendable is the the scene where the 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 ship cr- almost cra- crashes on uh charlie's oh yeah and she's just like running in a straight line, oh, okay. line and, it's a, and it's a donut <laughs> yeah she could have just literally she literally could have taken a step right um i fuck with prometheus major heavy. fassbender role yeah, that's better time. He was really good. In I hated it. it. David, I hated the, it the, droid. the first time I saw it. Yeah. Oh, but it's so, I think and it's then, good. On a and then watch. the second time I was like, wait a sec, hold on. That's Idris <laughs> Elba. That's Benedict Wong, I think was his ship's mate or whatever. A couple yeah. other really good actors in that. Um, after that, uh, Dutch, who's the heavy weapons guy, Dave Batista. You, I mean, that's just a no brainer in my opinion. <laughs> no brainer. Heavy Batista weapons rules. Guy. Uh, Buck, who's like the squad leader, who's played by Nathan Fillion in the game, like mo I don't think he's probably a little aged out for now. Charlotte Copley, although I think he's actually older than uh, Nathan Fillion. Charlotte Copley, and you'll you probably know immediately why I want him in this. Uh, Mickey, who's the rookie, Logan Lerman. I think okay. he, I think he's he's picking up steam. And then Romeo, who's the sniper guy, Michael Jai White. Uh, director, I want Neil Blomkamp. Neil Blomkamp, the guy who directed District Nine, Elysium, Hardcore Henry bunch of other things but specifically or chappy too if you want to include that but if you look at district nine district nine the the actual sci-fi elements of it like if you look at the 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 world that they built if you look at how it looks just from a cgi standpoint this movie was made in like 2009 looks better than almost any sci-fi movie coming out today grounded sci-fi exactly 
Mm-hmm. Exactly. Like they integrate the yeah. fake and the real. Perfectly. It was like a different version of steampunk almost. I, I'm trying to loop in steampunk in my head and I'm trying to. What do you mean? I, it's steampunk into District 9. Well, because it's like it, there's high technology, but it's like shitty. Yeah. Yeah. That's, yes. Okay. I see you now. Yeah. Um, like for the poor people, I mean. For my cinematographer, I want Hoyt Van Hoytema. Um, he's the guy who. That's Nolan, Nolan's guy, right? Yeah. He did Interstellar. He did Ad Astra. He did Dunkirk, Tenet, Nope bunch of other great stuff he's really really good in the sci-fi realm at building out just incredible that's shots. a great pick for the cinematographer it is yeah. yeah and then music martin o'donnell did the original halo track so i would definitely want him involved but i'd also i mean if you can get zimmer i mean yeah zimmer is the guarantee you can get zimmer the assumption here also is like you got like the avatar size budget yeah you, you get anything you want oh no, yeah it's fantasy so zimmer and o- martin o'donnell combination route i think would be amazing but here. if somebody wants to pass for our ideas um yeah <laughs> you should this is all copyright by the way uh gooch all right, I'm gonna go, and I talked about it on Monday's episode of LCB. I want, I want the Red Dead Redemption too. Yeah, adaptation. I made that first, and then I was like, Gucci is gonna make one, so yeah. I don't want to step on his. Yeah, and I've played a lot less games, Dude, it, so funny. it was like between this and uh, Kingdom Hearts. I was too. gonna do Red Dead Redemption <laughs> too, and then I was like, you know what? I feel like someone else might do mm. it. Someone had to do it. And yeah. It's gonna be me. Um, I'm the the smallest gamer here, uh, both in stature and the number of games <laughs> I've played. Um, but that game like Last of Us, is very cinematic. Like, the cutscenes are very, like, it tells a very coherent story that you get invested in. Like, what are the most heartbreaking final scenes? Oh, like, yeah. Oh, cr- by the I, end of brutal. it. Yeah, like, it... I, it I wrecked- legit cried. Mm-hmm. Um, so, going Red Dead Redemption 2, I want this as a series, though. Yeah, I want this as an HBO. Like, yeah. there's just too much too story long. to do. Um, which I also considered Skyrim, which I, I love Skyrim, but, like, that, like, someone... That's just way too much. There's, like, I don't see a coherent way of even. It's, it's also not as choose your own adventure. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. It's not like the story. The fun part about it is just like running around endlessly it's not in linear. the different world. The world yeah. is the fun part. The story isn't necessarily the cool part. Yeah. Um. So my Arthur, Tom Hardy. See, my oh, thought was. Okay, interesting. Dude, my I thought. Get, for, get him back in a Western. I was thinking, speaking of getting back in a Western, Chris Pine, when I originally wrote it out. He was in, he was in my 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 catalog. Short I had list, about yeah. 10 you different know, uh, You know who mine was going to be? Brolin. Brolin? Bro, he, age is the only thing that stopped me from thinking. I considered well. Brolin for another character. Okay. okay. But didn't go with it. Um, but I, I think Tom Hardy, I think he's a good actor, and I think he's picked some bad projects recently, but I still have a lot of faith in him. I think in The Revenant, the year that Leo won, I think Tom Hardy was better. Blew him out of the water. Mm-hmm. Like a lot Really better. good. Like very good. And yeah. I'd love to see him back in that setting. Yeah. So going with Tom Hardy, and he's a little younger too. Yeah. You know, like some of these actors that I was thinking about, like they've almost aged out of the Arthur Morgan mm-hmm. range. Like I thought about Bradley Cooper for a second and I was like, he's kind of old. But like, dude, Arthur's kind of, he's, he's in old. his like, he's like, I looked it up. He's 36 in the game. Okay. Yeah, bro. We're talking 1899. Yeah, yeah, which yeah. is like 45. Is like 70. Yeah. <laughs> You're basically in hospice at that point in yeah. the 1800s. Dude, he caught a, he 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 got one disease and it was fucking curtains. It's true. It's true. He basically caught a cold and yeah. died. Yeah. Um, if he had if he had even sniffed the antibiotic, he'd be chilling. <laughs> no, he's just drinking that like snake oil. Yeah, like, yeah. Snake just oil. coke, just cocaine water. <laughs> um, my Dutch did consider Brolin. Roland was a strong consideration. He was in the final two, but he lost out to Jeffrey Dean Morgan. Yeah, yeah that's yeah. a good pick. JDM plays like that older, grizzled, like, he, I, I like him. I haven't watched The Walking Dead, but everything I see of him in The Walking Dead, I'm like, this man needs to be in a Western. Yes. Because, yeah. like, The Walking Dead isn't pure Western, but it is, like, outlaw, like, dystopian, like, it fits into the Western, neo-Western genre almost. Yeah. Um, also, he's salt and pepper in Dutch. is salt and pepper time. Yeah, he, yeah, he's got the look, Big too. Big time salt and pepper. Major look. My director, oh, fuck. I was down between two. I'm going to go James Mangold. Yeah, damn, he'd be Man- great. Mangold's a bit of Logan, a studio man. director, and I don't know how much of a style, like unique style he has, but everything he's handed in terms of like big studio projects, he just kind of fucking nails. Like mm-hmm. He really does handle it, and exactly, Logan. Yeah, it's similar. Yeah, Logan is like, I mean, in terms of neo westerns, you can't get much better than that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, cinematographer. I'm going to go Robert Ellsworth. Which oh, who's that? Up, uh, no Richard Deacons. I thought I thought that would be a no brainer. I was for thinking Western. Deacons. I was thinking Deacons, but Ells- like a cop out almost. Ellsworth's done. Yeah, Ellsworth's done. There will be blood. Yeah. Nightcrawler, damn. and he's also done Mission Impossible movie. Okay. 
Um, so what I'm thinking is he can handle like the Western side. He can handle like a lot of dark, gritty scenes like Nightcrawler. But he also can handle these big like action sequences, mm -hmm. which Shootouts. there would be a ton of. I mean, you got the train heist, stuff like that. Need to be able to handle it. So that's the director or the cinematographer mm -hmm. I'm going with. And then composer going Trent Reznor, Atticus Ross. Baby. Yeah. I that, think they like because you got a lot of guitar going with the res. Yeah, dude, you got a lot of guitar strings going like darker. Like mm -hmm. I, I think they're top five right now. You need a lot of banjo work. Yeah, you, you, top five composers right now. Yeah, who? I mean, they're really fucking good. I they're nominated to the, uh, for what do you call it? Um, Soul. What two years ago? Yeah, I listened to their. Uh, I haven't seen the movie, but I listened to their Bones and All soundtrack too, mm -hmm. and they did a really good job with that. It's fucking, I can't hear any more about Bones and All. Can't hear another fucking word about it. So here comes my RDR2 uh, adaptation. HBO, put the check in the mail. Um, yeah. <laughs> need to have it. Like, I think everyone agrees that that needs to happen. Yeah, I, I'm just curious how you do it and keep it. Like, well, like Last of Us has been doing it perfectly, I think, with that first See, I episode. Think, I think The Last of Us is going to be huge for some of these moving forward. Yeah. Like, yeah, but it's, dude, The Last of Us is the meta because it is the the video game that is most made like a movie. Like, they almost have yeah. no, they almost have no reason to fuck it up. Because it is it's the so most linear, linear yeah. story. Like, you just do it. Like, you just make it a movie. Mm -hmm. That's true. I guess, that, But in the same way, like, if you just did, like, the main campaign in Red Dead instead of any side shit, like, that could be your linear path, if that makes sense. Yeah. My, uh, my thought was just, like, I feel like a lot of studios are going to look at this and be like, oh, so if you take the time to do it, like, people are going to fucking love it. Like, yeah. And people are really loving this. All over I think that they would have to have, like, maybe the only thing about Red Dead 2 is that. Uh, the way that the story works out in the meat of it, like in the middle, is it's sort of repetitive. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Where it's like you move from, you get go go to a new town, mm -hmm. you get your feet wet, you can do a couple like Little missions, you pull a couple hustles, then like you run into some sort of bureaucrat, and then you got to do a sticky job, and then you this blow is, the whole thing up. This is the exact plot to the Mandalorian. Yeah, yes. it's true. <laughs> yeah, and it works exactly. It's a working formula. Yeah, uh, Rudy. So mine is uh, Horizon Zero Dawn. Oh, nice. I love that game. Such a good game, dude. Um, let me pull up my notes real quick. Video game show, Horizon Zero Dawn. I thought you were going to say Laser Shoot Larry. <laughs> <laughs> um, but for those that may not know, Horizon Zero Dawn. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know your fan base, but uh, Horizon They're big Zero gamers. So they'll, they'll, so know. they'll know. Okay, yeah. So Horizon Zero Dawn is a sci-fi PlayStation exclusive Um I think it's one of the most like unique takes on sci-fi. If you even include like movies or anything, like mm. it is so unique in terms of the way the story plays out. It's like a very fresh take on sci-fi. Yeah. Um, set in the future, but then the humans are, I mean, I'm not even going to explain like, the plot, I guess like cavemen fighting dinosaurs made of technology, but then the technology is made by humans of the past. Exactly. And so there's a cool angle for like, in this game, there's a lot of cutscenes of how this, how we got to this point. Yeah. And so you could have like a very cool dual story where it's like showing the past. You could even expand upon that more. A lot of lore. Yeah. A lot of lore. So you can go lore storyline and then you can mm -hmm. go Aloy, who's the main character storyline. Yeah. For Aloy, badass redhead. Mm -hmm. Okay. I, my first one to play Aloy was Amy Adams. Yeah. Because she has red hair. Yeah, and it's high profile. Yeah. High profile. Um, obviously, you can just dye someone's hair red, but like, mm. I don't know. I just feel like she, I, she's good. Oh, at, this is the girl that people got so fucking mad when they updated her. Oh, they did? Yeah, because I sequel? guess they made her like uh, too jacked. Oh, uh, okay. like, oh, she's not feminine enough. Uh, yeah, I mean, I'd still let her thump me. Mm. Um, but so. Yeah, look at her now. Goddamn. Amy Adams, because she's able to really like. Aloy's character has like a very kind but stern soul, like very kind but stern at the same time. And Amy, Amy Adams, I think, has that like range, like Nocturnal Animals. She's really fucking good in that. That was one of the most depressing movies I've ever seen. That's also true. <laughs> she is able to strike that tone nicely. The other one I thought would be a good fit, just another basic redhead, but I think can strike that as well as rose leslie who played yeah Inc from game of thrones from game of thrones so but i think amy adams if we can get her yeah if we can get her i go amy adams and then hades which is the protagonist ai but it, the, all the ai in this game is highly highly advanced i mean they're they're full-on characters they're not just like you know chat gpt mm -hmm. so i would go with benedict cumberbatch yeah i like that strictly Great you know I, i'm you know i'm not like a 
I'm not going to have cool picks like you guys do, like deep ones. Like I think Benedict Cumberbatch, smog. Yeah. Like he did that. He did that. <laughs> what a mocap role. Like man. basically smog is just Hades in Lord of the Rings. Like, yeah. you know what I mean? So I'm just sort of doing the like the normie approach to it. But uh, for Gaia, who's a, the good AI, I would go with Viola Davis. Yeah. Okay. I like that. Yeah. And then uh, for Aaron, who is sort of a, a lesser character, but is sort of like the fun loving, uh, like sort of bumbling fool with a heart of gold that will do anything for Aloy, Danny McBride. Uh-huh. <laughs> hell yeah that's perfect the way you described him like yeah no that's danny mcbride yeah You're describing to a t right and if if uh we had done this list pre-alien covenant i don't know if danny mcbride would have been able to been taken seriously true wow yeah but alien alien covenant danny mcbride kind of fucking yeah delivers yeah like you know typically danny mcbride is one of those dudes where it's just like oh danny mcbride's in the movie like, same role in everything yeah he's just danny mcbride but which is awesome but like in uh alien covenant it was like oh this dude can act yeah so I think Danny McBride would be perfect. And also like this story isn't like wildly heavy acting. Yeah. It's just cool sci-fi. And so uh, for Rost, uh, who is Aloy's father or adopted father, uh, Jeff Bridges. Mm. Yeah, he's great oh, for this type of thing. That's great. That's like uh, True Grit. Yeah, exactly. So he's he's got that perfect vibe. Um, and then for Silence, who is sort of the uh, like – Dude, did, dude, by the way, did you watch The Old Man? You feel like you might have watched yeah, The Old like Man. Yeah, you like The Old Man on Hulu? No, I, I've oh, heard of it, though. Dude, you dig it. It's really good. He's like, good. it's kind of shocking. It's a Hulu series, but yeah. No. Oh, okay, I'll check that out. Uh, but Silence, who is also the, like, good guy, bad guy. You can't really tell what his motives are, but he's the one sort of driving the plot forward. He's the one who's actually kind of directing Hades. Uh, Mahershala Ali. Yeah. See, we're have Mahershala Ali in the brain. Yeah. He's a great guy, so, great someone, actor. Someone asked it the other day, and they're like, now that, you know... Uh, Blade Daniel Day Lewis has been gone for you know he's been retired for ten years now mm-hmm. almost. Um, like who is the best actor in Hollywood? And like Mahershala Ali like has he's up there. A very he's much up a, there. like there was a lot of replies with that, and I was like that's actually like a very strong case to be made. I yeah. would say yeah him. You could say Leo, but doesn't like, miss. I don't know Leo. Leo's great, but like dude, Leo I, does a lot of the same stuff. I think that like not based on like he hasn't really like shown it and like it's hard to separate the art from the artist but i think like just based on like what i know they can do i would say shia is like it's true a very like he's he won't a have very, a ton of work but <laughs> he's a very fucking good actor yeah even though he's a psychotic freak yeah i was gonna say he's but, not gonna have a lot of work for a while yeah but uh i i i I'll, I'll get heat for this too i would actually say tom hardy mm. tom hardy's up there for sure tom hardy if he had never done venom yeah. he would be much higher in my rank like, yeah i think he's actively bad and like i think that accent that he decided to go with was terrible yeah um, yeah that was weird but outside of that yeah no i like him and everything and he's very good obviously we talked about the mask thing like he's good with his eyes like good delivery yeah, yeah he's just got it also just very funny like backstory like his like i mean not funny but he was just a drug addict like mm. oh he's a fascinating guy yeah like his <laughs> yeah. old pictures are like <laughs> he's what did he say i'm not gay but i did yeah he's yeah. like he's like i'm not gay but, but i'm an sex. actor He's like, I've, I am an actor. Like, yeah. yeah, that was a funny response. Yeah, no. And you know that him and Fassbender were classmates? No. Yeah, they were classmates. Huh. And uh, I guess Tom was like always really jealous of Fassbender because he was like, this guy is just always better than me. Fassbender's really good. <laughs> yeah, he is good. And then uh, for the Sun King, Avad, Remy Malik. Mm, that's really good. The yeah. sun, there's a Sun King? Yes. I mean, that's perfect. Yeah. yeah. Rami's Egyptian too, right? Yes. Yeah. yeah. And uh, yeah, so there's like these different factions in the game. Mm-hmm. And like Danny McBride's characters are like, well, it was similar to like, they they would be like the dwarves. Like they okay. they strike that same tone of like they're yeah. miners. They work with metal a lot. Okay. They're very like, you know, brash or like uh, the brute force. And mm-hmm. then um, Sun King is like the very sort of advanced but have like strange like so they're the elves yeah kind of but like they're like they're more advanced and they're kind of just but they have like a weird religious faction that they're trying to like figure out and they're like when the sun king is a good dude who's trying to sort of like shift it's like it's like a good pope almost yeah um and then ted farrow who is the like root cause of all this and sort of the main character in all the lore he's the one that triggered the apocalypse with his ai weapons technology and then sort of dastardly like covered it up and tried to shift blame and then erased all of the memory of what happened because he was so ashamed and it's sort of a sympathetic character because 
you know, he did the, he did a really bad thing. They had an AI built in called Apollo or not Apollo. They had an AI built in. I can't remember which they had like 12 sub functions of this AI. And one of them was to store all the information of human beings mm -hmm. so that when in like 3000 years, when they re when they rehabitate the earth from these, uh, AI like built in functions to like bring humans back, they would know like all the technology we had. He erased the whole thing because he basically was the architect of the end of the world. Mm -hmm. Jesus. Because of his greed. So it's like tough because it's like, damn, dude, like that actually is a pretty tough cross to bear, mm -hmm. but obviously a shitty thing to do. So anyways, um, he literally is like, it, it, it's like what Elon Musk thinks he is, this character. Basically, yeah. Yeah. It's like a hyperbole version. Yeah. It's like if Elon Musk actually did create things. Um, so Ted Farrow would be Brian Cranston. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. That would there draw so many people into. Right. I mean, this, I mean, we, the budget better be big boys for this one because mm -hmm. I'm, I'm bringing in some, some expensive tickets here uh for the cinematographer um i went with i wanted to go with the interstellar guy yeah but it's not the 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 aesthetic of the game is not that kind yeah I so agree. i went with jonathan sila huh i'm not familiar and jonathan sila let me re bring up my notes hold on jonathan sila uh he did bullet train okay and bullet train, maybe it's just because I'm like so dumb, but like the way that like the lights are and everything is like similar to what is in Horizon Zero Dawn. Okay. Like sort of those like kind of like cool, like futuristic neon. lens yeah. flare neon and sort of just the crispiness of it. Mm -hmm. And um, it's one of those things where like, I don't necessarily want the, I want it just to look pretty and okay. look crispy. Damn. And it's not really like... Um, it, I don't want the cinematographer to take front stage. He's got a great filmography too, by the way. Good lord! Give me, give me some law-abiding citizen. Okay, John Wick, law-abiding citizen, atomic really holy shot, atomic blonde. Um, oh, there you go. That's even that's a way better example than Bullet Train. If you yeah, you, you've yeah. seen Atomic Blonde, right? I know. I saw dude that movie. That I think the best thing it has going for it is how well it's shot. And after yeah. that, Deadpool two, uh, Hobbs and Shaw, which like whatever you want to say about the movie is like the like, shot I line. Like, I like yeah, Hobbs no, and is, Shaw. He, yeah. he makes he makes shit look crispy. The word that comes to mind is just that shit's crispy. Very crispy guy. <laughs> yeah, that that shit looks crispy. And then a lot the, of music videos. Holy shit, nothing. So many music videos. Holy hey, shit. Yeah. Gary Gray was a music. He did Wrecking guy. Ball for Miley Cyrus. That's I crazy. mean that if you say what you want, that's an iconic music video. Yeah. And then the uh, the the other one I had was. Uh, I don't even remember why I wrote this down. There was a movie I had in mind that I liked a lot. It was Darius Wolski. Uh -huh. um, oh, that sounds familiar. Yeah, no, he did uh, Sicario, mm. Last Duel. Wait, no, he didn't do original Sicario. That was Richard Deacons. Uh, or, hold on, what movie did I look up? I'm such a fucking idiot. There's a lot of Polish cinematographers, I think. Yeah, I know, but this is the guy, but I'm trying to think of what movie, what movie it was. He did the second Sicario movie. Uh, the last duel, which was the great other, shot. the other, the other cinematographer oh. I had written down was he's, he's Mexican, but he's of Polish descent. I'm pretty sure. Manuel Lebeski. He's a Ridley Scott guy. He did Prometheus. Oh, that's why. Okay. Yeah. It was alien covenant. Yeah. That's uh, in Prometheus. That's what that's. And the Martian. That's and why, the Martian, yeah. that's why I, I wanted Ooh. him. You want to talk about a crispy movie. Yeah. Martian, so very crispy. crispy. So, so yeah, this is Ridley and, to and Tony Scott's guy or formerly, I guess, Tony Scott's guy. Like these, their dude. That's kind of sick. Yeah, so that's why I picked him. Um, but I, I still like the bullet train dude better. Yeah. And so then for the score, uh, I mean, obviously, like if you get a chance, he's going to get Hans Zimmer. Yeah, obviously. Yeah, fine, but I, I, that's an obvious pick, you know, clearly. So I wanted to pick something else that was a little bit different. You know who I think would go kind of crazy on this that doesn't even really score movies as, as far as I'm concerned? Dead Mouse. There is a lot of electronic noise that happens in the game. A lot of a electronic lot of noise. And he is a very talented. Cre uh, create like yeah. he, he he would i think that if you were like score this movie he would be able to do it hmm. mm -hmm. he's not just like the typical like you know he can make bops yeah classics yeah. all that shit but if you like watch youtube videos about him creating music and like coming up with things like and a lot of his songs are like 10 to 12 minutes mm -hmm. that are just like i very, believe it yeah i so. believe that like djs could score movies yeah, yeah. because like Ludwig, so much who ambient did, who noise. Did, Gornson did uh, Andor, right? Uh, did Andor? Who did Andor? <sighs> Fuck, I don't remember. But anyways, he like just dropped like you could tell like he was just dying to drop a, a yeah. track. I mean, uh, it's Nicholas Bertel. Bertel, yeah, Nicholas Bertel did Succession. Like he just dropped an absolute track in the middle of Andor for yeah. no fucking like really sick club mix. Like what yeah. is it called? 
Miyakno's club mix or something. Some shit like that. Yeah. Yeah. Like, so I think both, I think they run very similar brains. Like, yeah. Cause you know, typically like there had a lot of his songs has lyrics, but he works primarily without lyrics. A lot of yeah. them are scores on their own. So I think dead mouse actually could do it. I mean, I picked Reznor and Reznor and Atticus. Atticus so like, Nine inch, I have nine inch nails scoring my shit. <laughs> yeah. All right. I think we had pretty good teams. We do have to get out here because I believe Robbie's coming in. But I think we had really solid teams. And Hollywood, again, if you're listening, you Seriously. owe us money if the if you fall through with any of these ideas. If you're mm-hmm. gonna do a video game adaptation, just don't like don't do Uncharted. Like don't do yeah. that shit. Like take your time and like do something good. Uncharted something gave good. me the hardest laugh. That's a, that's actually one that should have worked. Because the yeah. Uncharted games actually very do linear have good too. Same. Like- no, it's the same studio as uh, Last of Us, mm-hmm. Naughty Dog. But dude, the hardest laugh I've had in a theater in like maybe years was during Uncharted, and it wasn't even meant to be funny. Dude, I went to the the theater where the seats move. Oh, you did a forty X, forty X on Uncharted, oh, yeah. and I was uh, uh, I was on a date, and I told her I was like, "Listen, this is either going to be really cool or one of the funniest, most like nauseating experiences ever." Oh. And it was hilariously uncomfortable and terrible experience. But there's this one scene where Wahlberg is fighting the like uh, this girl who's like yeah, a kung yeah, fu yeah. expert, yep. right? And they're fighting, they're duking it out, and at one point. Wahlberg just right hooks her and the seats like there's a bass drop and the yeah, seats yeah. like shifted and I just could not stop <laughs> laughing at the fact that there was like Mark Wahlberg absolutely demolishing some connecting with a chick and then like a bass drop and the seats <laughs> shifting I was like this is I couldn't stop laughing and no one else was laughing dude I, I accidentally bought tickets for 40x uh last summer for <laughs> DC Super League of Pets um. and I just like sat down the seats started moving and I was like I fucked this one up and <laughs> just walked right back dude. out <laughs> And when I went to see Uncharted, the first time the seat shift, this dude behind us just goes, oh, hell no. And just gets up and leaves. <laughs> yeah. It was hilarious. They trick people. They think it's like a picture quality thing. Yeah. Uh, but that's a long take. We'll be back next week. I think we got a bigger thing planned for next week. Yeah, we let's do K- the... Uh... We have KB and Nick on board. So. Oh, really? Yeah. We're going to do them? So, yeah. Right. So we'll be on board for the potential Guys Choice Awards happening next week. Cool. Uh, but we'll see you guys then. Thanks I'll for having you. me, boys. Yep. Thanks, Rudy.